YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kami if you are new here and today's video as you guys can already tell from the title is going to be a tips video on how to get an A and A level biology but also kind of like a breakdown of how I ended up getting my A personally having seen an E two to three months prior to my actual first A level biology exam. Before we get onto my main five tips I do want to preface to you guys that I did have a tutor. I had a tutor for about just over a year. Not to say that my tutor was rubbish because my tutor was definitely really good but I will say that I could have done this without having a tutor primarily because the tutor helped with content. My issue in A-level biology wasn't content, in fact it was exam technique. With that being said I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to get straight into the five things I'm going to recommend for you guys to do if you find yourself in my situation where you just can't seem to get the hang of A-level biology. Okay so first things first, the first thing I did was I made a very very strict schedule for myself because we're talking it is the end of March we're basically in April now. My first biology paper was in June but A-levels really started for me in May because I did psychology so I really didn't have much time coming out of my March mocks and I knew I needed to make a very 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 strict schedule for myself. I had four hours in a day that was non-lesson time that I could study. So I allocated each hour to each of my subjects so one hour psych, one hour chem, one hour biology but the extra hour I had I dedicated it specifically to biology exam tech Technique. Um, so that would be things like statistic questions or it would be graph questions. I stopped going to school after April. We still had school like one week before A levels really started because I just thought it was a waste of my time and I wanted to have as many hours in a day, eight, nine hours in a day to dedicate to properly, properly putting in the work because where I was at with biology was not great and I also needed to ensure that my other grades didn't slip. First it was I would plan out my time using the four hours I would have free and then it changed into eight, nine hours in a day that I would have free but yeah that was the first thing I did so the next thing I did was I gave myself a month so within the schedule I had given myself a month to tackle content there were certain things where I just didn't understand at all that we kind of rushed towards the end of year 13 so topics like that was what I really wanted to spend my content review time for like I was just ironing out all the kinks in my content it was very important for me to go through all the little things that I kind of like pushed to the side that I didn't understand throughout the two years I I revisited those and I ensured I properly knew them. I understood the process, I understood everything. There was nothing that I didn't really get. I had to make sure that was the case because biology is so exam technique heavy and application heavy. You aren't really gonna get anywhere if you don't even know what you're talking about. Like you won't be able to apply knowledge that isn't already there. So I had to make sure that everything was 10-10. Like I understood everything there was to understand. As I'm going through content, it wasn't just, oh, I'm reading the textbook or I'm watching a video. I also did practice questions to make sure that I actually understood what I was doing anyways and to give myself further exposure to practice paper settings and whilst you do this you also get used to the types of marking points that they like to use for each topic too and then this easily leads me on to the third thing I then did full pass papers this right here everything I'm going to say to you right now I believe is the key to getting your A in A level biology what it is that you guys need to do is you guys need to study the past papers there is a difference between doing past paper questions and doing full past practice papers. Everyone says to you, practice, 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 do as many past paper questions as you can, you'll get used to exam technique, you'll get used to the type of way that they want you to answer the questions. No, you only get used to it when you do actual past papers not just the questions when you do past papers you kind of get to study and learn the way that the paper flows because each paper is different each paper aims to assess different things and each paper has a different structure when you learn the structure first of all you know what to expect in your exam when you know all of these things and you know at the beginning of the paper it's this type of question that type of question in the middle you are able to navigate the paper and the paper is not now navigating you begin to learn whether it will be easier for you to start at the back first start in the middle first or just start from, from the beginning traditionally you also begin to see the types of topics that these people like to put in each paper yes we had advanced information so we knew what topics were going to be there but it didn't give us everything i was able to predict what topics were going to come up in my exams and nine times out of ten i was correct i didn't really clarify this properly whilst filming but i just wanted to mention that what i meant by i was able to predict what was coming up was that i was able to predict what was coming up that wasn't mentioned on the advanced information as you all know they didn't give us every single little detail that would be on our papers so i was just referring 
referring to the parts of the paper that they didn't actually make clear to us that would be on our actual exams. I feel like for so long we were talking about how biology is this ambiguous subject where no one really knows how to navigate it. They ask you, oh, suggest how blah 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 and it's like how do you magically know what the mark scheme wants you to write. Biology is not ambiguous. Once you do all the past papers, you begin to realise in what papers do what types of questions come up and in what topics do what types of questions come up. Like for example, stimuli and response. I believe that they used to enjoy putting questions like suggest why this happens or they love to talk about IAA and oxen and that type of thing and they would ask you to explain what is happening and once you do those certain things so much and you realize the mark scheme is asking you to write the same thing over and over again you begin to learn what it is you need to write guys I kid you not when I was doing my actual paper like my actual A level exams I was just going through the catalog the bank of questions and answers that I had created and I would just apply them to where I believed this was the correct answer, this was the correct format and I just used to be so confused about what it was that I was missing. What is it that I'm not doing that I'm not getting my grade? And it was, I didn't really understand the marking points. I didn't remember them, I hadn't committed them to memory and I didn't understand the format of past papers in A-level AQA biology. The fourth thing um, is now not really that important. It is important but at the same time not really. It was practicals. All I did was watch Miss Estrick's videos a couple days before my actual exam there isn't a vast variety of types of questions question types once you learn the types of questions that can come up you're basically guaranteed to get them all right but one of the practicals that miss estrick had gone through the question that she had actually gone through with us went and came up in that one paper so i literally knew exactly what to write so that was all i did for practicals the final thing i wanted to talk about was essays i really didn't do too much of my essays all i did was plan and plan and plan and plan as many different essays as I could because I think what stumps a lot of people is they say that it has to be it has to be four completely different topics from different areas of the spec but then they also need to be somewhat linked how do you do that and that can take a lot of time on the day when you're doing it on the spot identifying the links prior can really help you out on top of it I guess you can also do a full write-up under time conditions just so you can get used to the type of time especially because most people that do a level biology are not doing essay based subjects I've gone through everything I wanted to go through for this video if you guys have any other questions or if you didn't really understand certain parts I was saying because I do feel like I was being a bit rambly comment it down below if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're new here do make sure to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video